So where are we going with this car? Well, more importantly than where we're going is where are we going to stop at? Hopefully we'll stop before we, you know, run over something. Uh, so brakes are important. I'm going to need brakes on all four wheels. And I would like to have a parking brake on the back. So that has kind of changed some of my plans. Uh, originally, I had it just set up with the complete Impala rear axle. had the Impala, or Impala rear axle, Impala front axle under the rear. It had the Impala front brake calipers and front brake discs still on it. And those are some fine brakes. Uh, nice for a road course car or a racing car or something like that, but they're way bigger than what I need, especially because they're bigger than the brakes on the front are. So one of the problems is the calipers are way too big. I mean, that's the size of the caliper. This is the size of my master cylinder. The master cylinder will never be able to fill those calipers. So I was gonna have to change the brakes anyway. Just a little closer look at piston volumes and fluid flow amounts. This is the uh, brake master cylinder off the Toyota Celica. This is the piston size on the caliper that it was designed to fill. This is the Impala SS front brakes. Now you can obviously see why I'm not going to be able to use those because the amount of fluid flowing in one stroke of that piston is not going to move enough fluid to actually clamp the brake pads down on the rotor. You'll have to pump the brakes just to get brakes. That's why I say the Impala rear brake would have worked. The piston is similar in size, but no emergency brake, parking brake. This has a parking brake. The piston is a little bit bigger than what the Toyota piston is, but it will work. The worst thing that might happen is I might not have enough rear brakes, so I might have to change the proportioning valve out and put in a manual proportioning valve so I can adjust my brake bias. But hopefully we won't have to do that. And uh, I'm still convinced this is gonna work. Well, until it doesn't work. I was gonna use, initial thought was to use the Impala rear brake calipers because they are similar in size to the Toyota rear brake calipers. That would have worked except no parking brake. So I decided to buy these because they have a parking brake on them. And well, probably should have gone to the salvage yard and looked at some brakes to see which ones would fit the best. Got a little better idea before I just started looking at pictures and dimensions online. But these are gonna work. As you can see, this one's already been modified for the left side. This is the one I've got to modify for the right side. And it will all fit with the Impala rear disc rotor. And uh, don't need that part anyway. So with this size of a piston, I'll at least have enough master cylinder to clamp the piston down and not run out of fluid volume before the brake pads even start to move. So now I guess what I need to do is turn this and this into another one of these. As I may have mentioned before, I should have gone down to a salvage yard and looked at a whole bunch of brake calipers to see which one fit the best. But I have to cut these ears off because they will, when it's lined up with the rotor, these will run into the caliper mounts on the spindle. So in order to get the depth of these, what I've done is thrown a stack of five washers on each of these. That way this can go over the rotor and will slide down in front of it and I can mark it around here on the back side. I'll show you how that worked. Make sure you put the nuts on the ones that actually have washers stacked on them. And that's good enough right there. Should be, yep. Slide that bad boy over the top and lock it in place. And towards the end of this video, I'll throw in a couple other things that I had to modify in these calipers that I wouldn't have had to modify had I found calipers that fit my application better. But these are what I bought, and these are what I'm going with. And it's not a race car. And with my precision spacers underneath here, five washers stacked on each one of these, that brought it out enough so it would clear. And my precision clearance right here, uh, the thickness of one cereal box, should work. I was able to just scribe along the outside edge of the original brackets on the spindle. That gave me my marks that I would need to clear the spindle, allow the whole hub and caliper bracket to go in. And it worked on the other side. 
Well, I finally made it over to the bandsaw. Bandsaw and a bunch of other stuff. I checked the rule book and nowhere does it say that any of this is illegal. Unsafe? Yes. Illegal? No. I did something like this on the first one and nobody got injured severely. So let's see how this works out this time. Well, it worked again, sort of. So the plan from here is to finish this out, grind it, and not end up taking too much off and having to buy another caliper bracket because I screwed this one up. So it should go fairly well because I've already done one and I have it to go by and it worked the first time so it should work the second time because I have more of an idea of what I'm doing. A Little bit more clearance in here, line them up. Uh, right now I think what I'm gonna start on working on is making the aluminum part of the adapter plate that bolts here to here. So I think that's the next step, maybe. What I need to do now is turn this into a brake bracket and it doesn't go deep enough into here. I've got a little bit of a template that I cut to make it kind of the shape I need. But I'm gonna be able to cheat making the second one because the first one's already been clearanced. So all I have to do is mirror image this clearance. I'll make some marks on this and we'll get to cutting. And at some point we're gonna to wanna to weld to this aluminum so you might wanna clean it off a bit. That had a thick layer of corrosion on it. Can't even get good scrap aluminum without any marks in it. It's all nice and shiny now. So to be a mirror image of this one, this area will be what gets removed. I'll just line the two up, clamp them together, drop my center punch down through there, mark my holes and drill my first two holes and then start machining off the edge there. And how precise does this have to be? Well, it has to be pretty close, but uh, I think I'll be getting it precise enough because before I bought this piece of machinery, I would have done this on a drill press. This isn't going to tell me if they're perfect yet or not, but it will tell me if I'm pretty, oh yeah. Yep, just got to cut the clearance now. Get some clearance clearance. And again, I have the first one that I made to help me out with. The uh, first one I made, I just kind of guessed at this stuff. Took a little bit off, test fitted it, took a little bit off. Flip it over, get it all lined up, mark it out. The most important part is going to be getting the hole lined up, I suppose. It's got a burr on the edge of it. No wonder I can't line it up. All right, much better. Look at that, I even had a pen ready. So all the stepping is not really necessary but I had just cut it to this depth first and then I needed to cut it a little bit deeper for my last clearance to get that final little bit of edge right there far enough. But we'll uh, make this one similar to that one and it's all done by hand, no CNC contouring programming or nothing like that. Well, 
looks like we have something to work with here. Getting close. All right, we're starting to get it wore down into shape. Now it's time to make these partial cuts with a hole saw. And when you make a partial cut with a hole saw, well, you don't have a center post for the arbor to run in. So I've made this handy dandy little device right here. Fits on my drill press. That slides in there and that is my center pivot for the arbor on my hole saw. That keeps the hole saw from jumping all over the place. Just lock that in the old vise on the drill press and cut away. The hardest part of the whole operation now is just getting everything lined up and clamped in place so it doesn't jump around. Well, that worked out pretty good. Now we're back over to the table. On the original part that I did first, these were kind of figured out just based on what I had for scrap and then I cut them to approximately the shape and just keep work, kept working them down until they fit the shape I wanted them to fit. On these, I'm just gonna do this the easy way and just lay it over the top, scribe underneath. That'll give me my marks and then I will cut them out on the bandsaw to approximately the right shape, give them a little sand and to smooth off the rough edges, tack weld them on there. While all of these are brake parts, none of them are exactly rocket science. You just have to hold the pads in place, in line with the disc, and keep them there when you step on the brakes. It's not like I'm trying to fit a cylinder inside of a sleeve on an engine or anything, so all this stuff is, you know, pretty close. Doesn't have to be exact, which always makes life a lot easier. I'm going to see if I can get this set in here where it's supposed to be. The idea is to get this lined up, the aluminum block lined up with the cast piece right there, and then wedge it over there and hold it in like that, and then I'll tack weld it. Wedge caliper over. And this little guy right here will give me a little bit of clearance between the aluminum bracket that I'm building and the bracket that is already there on the car. That way, I know there won't be any interference between the two. Now I get the bottom one lined up the same way and do a little welding. All right, I got them locked in place on the bottom, locked in place on the top. Now to just tack weld them in place. Well, as I get set up to weld this, I can tell you once again, I know enough about welding to stick two pieces of metal together, but I know that welding a one inch thick piece of aluminum is beyond the capability of this welder. But all I'm doing is tacking it together. It's just a spacer plate that a bolt goes through. So once I get it tacked on there, drill a hole through it, bolt it together, it'll stay. Well, it appears we're getting close. All these parts are starting to look like all those parts, and if that one will work on that side of the car, then this one should work on this side of the car. Uh, what I'm doing next is I'm going to drill two holes and tap them and just get them centered in the mass of this metal so they're not too close to one edge or the other and will crack out real easy. And then the next step will be to line these up, tack them on there, and drill holes in it to line up just like I did on this. Mm right about there so basically the location of these holes is just done by eye but i'm going to take it a little bit more seriously than just marking it with a marker now that i've got some center punch marks on it i will take it out to the mill and bore a couple nice straight square holes in it notice an additional clamp there it kind of started to shift a little bit 
none of this is rocket science, it's just uh, race car science. Beautiful. Now we just tap some threads. Is it cheating? I don't know, but it gets the thread started nice and straight. Get it in a couple rounds like this, and then I'll take it over in the vise and finish threading it. My machine doesn't have fluid to clear the threads, so uh, use a little compressed air. Somebody's getting fired. Well, I got to give him credit. He did plug it in far enough to at least shut off the onboard camera mic so there was no sound at all. Well, I've got my caliper bracket installed. I need to get these last two holes drilled in here. And in order to line them up, I'm going to need to center punch the holes. But I can't center punch the holes with a standard center punch because the brake rotor will be in the way. So I made these nice little guys. They're just thread in center punches. Just a blind center punch. Threads into the uh, threaded hole. Got a sharp point on the end of it. And once you get everything lined up, even though the caliper is in the way, you can still center punch the holes. Once you get the brake caliper completely in place, locked into place, I wedge it over with a couple of screwdrivers to keep it tight up against the aluminum bracket. The points are now pressed against that aluminum bracket and just a simple light tap with the hammer will put two nice little dots right where I need to drill the holes. And everything should line up when I get done with this, I hope. Oh, how you like that precision cardboard spacer right there. It's beautiful, ain't it? Center punch the two holes, drilled the two holes on the center punch marks and tested them to see if they actually lined up. Well, look at that, they did line up. Is it better to be good? Or is it better to be lucky? All right, we're gonna do this again, this time with sound. Uh, got my parking brake calipers completely mounted. The brackets are made. I think they turned out uh, more than adequate to do the job. And now the next step is gonna be putting brake lines on it and putting the emergency brake parking brake cables in. I'll do that in the next video because this video is going to be more than long enough. Anyway, they're mounted. I've got just a little bit of clearance through here. That's all I need in order to not rub on this. I may have to grind off just a little bit on that edge to clear the rotor, but there's plenty of meat on the caliper to handle that. As long as we're at this point though, I'm gonna talk about a couple things that I would have done differently. As I said already in this video, I would have gone to a salvage yard and looked at brake calipers on different cars to see what came the closest to fitting. What I did was just went online, looked at measurements, dimensions, just trying to find something with parking brakes that I thought would fit this. These are gonna work, but there are a couple problems with them that I wish I would have found something different. Number one is the radius was just a tiny bit different on the brake drum or the brake rotor. That's not really gonna be that much of a problem because the shoes are so short, or the pads are so short. The other thing is the pads are just a little tiny bit wider than the actual rotor surface. So that means they're going to hang off just a tiny bit on both edges, and it's not going to be much, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind off a little bit of each edge so that they're not hanging over, especially on this inside edge, because on the inside edge, it'll go past the rotor and it'll rub on a surface that wasn't made to be worn away. And while the brake pads aren't super huge, they are fairly close to the same size, a little bigger than the original Celica ones and they are a bit smaller than the Impala ones, so the car's weight's gonna be much closer to the Celica. It's not gonna be a car that gets a lot of miles on it. It's not gonna be tracked, so it doesn't need to have huge brakes. And the little bit of wear that these brake pads will see five years from now, 10 years from now, when the brake pads get changed on it and they're only wore down a 16th of an inch, well, you know, it's not gonna be a problem to have to grind off a little bit of the outer edge to make them set on the center line of the pad. They set close enough to the center line so that the caliper will squeeze evenly on them and they won't get squeezed one way or another. They're perfectly aligned, so they're not gonna be at an angle. So they should wear just fine and they should stop the car adequately. 
It's just something that I'm going to drive around in. It does have to bring the car down from highway speeds, which it'll certainly do that. So they should adequately do the job, bring the car to a stop, and have a parking brake to make it street legal. So anyway, if you made it this far, like, share, subscribe, especially share. It's amazing how many people don't even know this project exists. So share this video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. On the other car, I, yeah, you gotta know what car this is before you start. Yo, footage. You gotta remember, you got to go know what you're saying before you start.